Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Bernal. I am Chief Scientific Officer at Ingeniería Risk Intelligence and the Technical Coordinator for the Development of the GIRI Model and Index for CBRI and UNDP. I'm very happy to share with you what I think nowadays is the most complex and ambitious disaster risk modeling in the world. As presented in the title of this presentation, GIRI is both a catastrophe risk model for the infrastructure of the world and a resilience index. Furthermore, GIRI is the only index to implement a holistic approach to infrastructure disaster resilience, making it versatile and powerful in the communication of current states of risk and resilience and the required actions to improve resilience and reduce risk. Infrastructure systems are the backbone of modern societies. A system can be understood as the set of physical structures, facilities, networks, and other assets which provide services that are essential to the social and economic functioning of a community or society. Interdependencies between the assets that make up an infrastructure system mean that infrastructure must be considered as a system of systems. Here we are interested in assessing disaster resilience of infrastructure systems. Resilience in this context can be assessed through attribute-based methods or performance-based methods. In a nutshell, attribute-based methods generally seek to answer the question, what makes my system more or less resilient? Thus, these methods typically include system properties that are accepted as being beneficial for resilience. For example, attributes like robustness, resourcefulness, adaptivity, recoverability, among others, are considered to be related to resilience. The application of this type of methods typically requires a definition of a system of indicators that reflect the attributes and the extent that they are present in an infrastructure system or system of systems. Performance-based methods estimate resilience based on a performance curve which underpins the ability of a system and its components to persist in the face of, adapt to, transform, or recover from the effects of a hazardous event in a timely and efficient manner. In the pre-event state, the system functions as expected, having a predefined performance level that responds to demand and offer conditions. Once the disturbance occurs, like this earthquake, for example, the performance drops abruptly to a remanent amount that depends mainly in the system's capacity to absorb, to withstand damage. Physical vulnerability strongly modulates this capacity. After the event, the degraded system needs intervention to be able to perform at least as in the pre-event state. The effective recovery of the system usually takes some time to begin, depending on the capacity to respond, which is strongly related to operational issues. Preparedness usually plays a key role in the response time. Then, the recovery of performance begins as fast as the system's capacity to restore the lost or damaged elements, facilities, or networks. Both approaches have their benefits and limitations, but when jointly considered, they have the potential to inform infrastructure stakeholders with a more complete understanding of infrastructure resilience. The Global Disaster Resilience Index, or GIRI, is designed as a combined approach to assess infrastructure disaster resilience. This is actually the most effective approach, given that the assessment of GIRI is done at national scale for all countries and territories in the world. To build up GIRI, we simplify the shape of the performance curve as shown. The three capacities, to absorb, to respond, and to restore, as well as the two independent variables in the curve, performance and time, are normalized and transformed into indicators. The set of attributes that are beneficial to resilience, known as well as resilience principles, is defined as exhaustively as possible. We know that the capacities in the performance curve reflect or are associated to some of the attributes. We are aware that the attributes may relate to more than one capacity, but to simplify, we accept the one-to-many relationship illustrated. 
then these attributes are accounted for through a system of indicators, carefully selected to reflect on the corresponding attributes that are used to quantify the corresponding capacity indices, making it possible to approach a measurement for resilience from a set of indicators available for most countries and territories in the world that are transformed into commensurable variables through the use of membership functions and then weight and added to make the index of each capacity. GIDI is calculated as the complement of a normalized relation between the area and the perimeter of the shape of this simplified and attribute-based performance curve. Now the only remaining element to assess is the disturbance that has an effect on the size of the drop from the pre-event state. This disturbance is unspecific meaning that it is impossible to know its size, characteristics, and origin beforehand. Or in other words, it may come from any hazard at any moment. We define this disturbance as a random loss of random occurrence. This implies that the disturbance must be quantified through probabilistic risk assessment using a CAT risk model. The CAT risk modeling approach used for GIDI is depicted in this slide. It has three main components, hazard, interpreted as a set of events that are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, covering all the possibilities in which hazard may manifest in the territory. Hydrometeorological hazards are modified by climate change. The exposure, which is the collection of elements on components of the infrastructure systems and the replacement value, and the vulnerability, which relates hazard intensity to cost of damage for each individual element. Their appropriate combination using a CAT risk modeling framework returns financial metrics such as the average annual loss or the PML curve, but more importantly, the loss exceedance curve that speaks about the probability distribution of the loss in the infrastructure of a country, covering from low loss events of high probability to high loss events of low probability. The loss exceedance curve speaks about the rate, which is a measure of the frequency, probability, or likelihood of loss amounts, being loss itself a measure of impact. The curve contains the full spectrum of events affecting the infrastructure of a country. Very common events with relatively lower losses, like landslides or floods, are more relevant to the first portion of the curve. Intermediate impact events of lower probability, like droughts or tropical cyclones, are represented in the central portion of the curve, while high impact events of very low probability, like tsunami or earthquakes, influence the curve in the last portion. The way the events occur in time and the impact cost, like in this example for different hazards, holds the rate and loss relationship expressed by the loss exceedance curve. The realization shown may even be different because these metrics are not a predictive tool, which implies that within the loss exceedance curve exists all the possibilities or combinations of event occurrence and consequences to the infrastructure. In other words, the loss exceedance curve fully represents a random loss of random occurrence, which is precisely what we need for GIDI. For example, if we aggregate the losses over time, the average rate of increment of the accumulated loss is the average annual loss. In a nutshell, the average annual loss represents the amount that needs to be paid annually to cover, in the long term, all the losses derived from the occurrence of natural hazard events in the infrastructure of a country. In actuarial terms, it is very similar to the pure risk premium of an insurance instrument. Other important metric comes from measuring the average time to the occurrence of events that exceed different amounts of loss. The probable maximum loss is an important risk metric that best relates to the real expected loss when a disaster occurs. In contrast to the average on a loss, the PML is not a flow variable, but a feasible amount of loss that may occur at some unknown moment in time. GIDI covers multiple hazards like earthquake, tsunami, landslide, flood, tropical cyclone, and drought, the last four with models that include climate change through the definition of upper and lower bounds of future climate variation, corresponding to the 20th and 80th percentiles of global climate model projections, extracted from the sixth assessment report of IPCC. The infrastructure sectors included are power, highways and railways, transportation, water and wastewater, 
communications, oil and gas, and buildings. Each sector is subdivided in subsectors, as shown, making this the most complete global risk model of infrastructure at present. All hazard models are global, covering the whole planet and event-based, built up by many individual events that, in conjunction, define all the ways each hazard may manifest in the territory. Nonetheless, it is simpler to show these integrated uniform hazard maps for illustration. The total economic value of the infrastructure of each country, illustrated here as bags of money, is approximated as a fraction of the produced capital within the total country wealth. It is important to approximate this amount to then distribute it over the individual components of all sectors and subsectors of infrastructure that have unique characteristics and geographical locations. This approach allowed us to exploit the most of all available geospatial data of infrastructure while constraining it to the macroeconomical capital stock for each country. GIDI incorporates state-of-the-art models of vulnerability based on archetypes of infrastructure components. The archetypes are general models of how the elements of an infrastructure system are typically made up of a set of components. Infrastructure elements like thermal power plants, airports, refineries, or wastewater treatment plants, for example, are made of individual constructions, machinery, and equipments that will suffer damage very differently when a hazard event strikes, contributing to the overall vulnerability of the archetype. Here are some examples of vulnerability functions for thermal power plants and different hazards. With over 50 different archetypes defined for this assignment, the GIDI library of vulnerability functions is, at present, the most complete resource on vulnerability models for CAT risk assessment of infrastructure systems. All risk models are created using Cabra Robot, which is Ingenieur's disaster risk assessment engine and probably the most complete CAT risk modeling suite available nowadays in terms of its coverage of perils and exposure sectors. As you probably imagine, the amount of results and metrics is huge. We are covering eight sectors, subdivided in a total of 25 subsectors and seven hazards, some of which have variations due to climate change. The overall matrix of possibilities is very large. However, not all cells in this matrix are included in the model. For earthquakes and tsunami, as well as tropical cyclones and flood, including the effect of climate change, all the combinations are covered as shown by the green squares in each cell. For landslides, both earthquake and rain triggered, the assessment is only performed on the roads and railway tracks of the world, where it makes more sense. The match between landslides and other infrastructure sectors is not as well represented in this model due to scale constraints. Finally, hydrological drought is included to quantify losses in hydropower generation and depletion of water for human consumption. Both effects don't affect physically the elements of infrastructure, but modify the offer and demand balance for those subsectors. The nature of the loss is quite different in this case, so a special treatment is given for droughts, making it different to the rest of the model, as illustrated by the different color of the squares. Inside each cell, we will find a full set of risk and resilience metrics, including the loss exceedance curve, the PML curve, the average annual loss, and the GIDI, with the disaggregation of all the indicators that make up the resilience capacities. Each cell is a vast source of information on disaster risk and resilience for a sector and hazard combination. Additions among cells are possible and allow the totalization of metrics, for example, by hazard, by subsector, by sector, or for the whole country. What is illustrated here is the set of results for one country, meaning that similar results are calculated for all countries in the world. At present, there is no other catastrophe risk modeling effort as prolific, versatile, and robust as the model for Giddy. 
with such an amount of fit-for-purpose metrics, the full spectrum of applications of Giri is still being discovered. For example, some uses of these results include a risk profile by country, very helpful for governments to understand their fiscal risk for all infrastructure sectors and to be able to inform and develop national resilience policies or strategies. The operational loss, for example, understood as an economic flow, provides very relevant information on the year-by-year -year balance between the government budget and the need for investments in risk management and climate change adaptation. On the other hand, the PML curve allows for the quantification of reserves and protection requirements, as well as more realistic view on the macroeconomic shock that hazard events may represent for the country. Giri, as mentioned, provides a holistic view for the risk profile, transcending the actuarial and financial metrics into a metric of resilience and its individual capacities. Useful for governments to diversify investment in risk management and climate change adaptation, referring to construction, operation, maintenance and repair among gray, green and blue infrastructure, but also investments on the social, environmental and economical transformations required to increase resilience. The Giri risk model is versatile enough to allow for the verification of the pertinence and effectiveness of risk management and climate change adaptation actions and plans. Using risk control engineering, it is possible to fine-tune a collection of risk management and climate change adaptation actions to achieve a target resilience level. Actions like design, construction and land use standards, response recovery and adaptation protocols, financial risk transfer schemes like insurance, CAD bonds, issue of contingent debt, among others, or interventions oriented by resilience attributes and principles. With such tools, governments can have an evidence base for the development of resilience standards in each sector. This is, in other words, to evaluate the effectiveness of disaster risk reduction measures to make decisions about the optimal level of resilience. GIDI is a cross-cutting metric and approach that provides robust results and metrics useful to inform, design, and monitor public policy in all aspects of development. To wrap up, GIDI, both a model and an index, takes into consideration disaster and climate risk as a byproduct of the existence of exposure and vulnerability conditions in the infrastructure systems over territories in which the occurrence of hazard events is natural. Climate change is explicitly incorporated in Giri, modifying the conditions of occurrence of natural hazards and the risk landscape, but in a way that is deeply uncertain. This justifies the use of probabilistic approaches to account for risk and resilience. Due to its probabilistic and holistic nature, Giri highlights the physical and intangible risk and vulnerability drivers thus enabling the identification of corrective and prospective interventions to be done. Furthermore, the architecture of Giri allows it to incorporate risk management and adaptation actions within the model, providing robust evidence and data on effectiveness for decision-making. And this is the same architecture that allows Giri to evolve and expand. Giri can support risk quantifications for other sectors and systems not included in this iteration, such as agriculture and ecosystems, which can be understood nowadays as critical infrastructure. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope this presentation was interesting and useful. I'll leave you to continue with the panel. It was a pleasure to speak with you today, and I hope we see each other very soon. Bye.